This is what I do on Friday nights, just hang out and write notes to myself while I watch documentaries. Just get riled up in your living room. I was wildly just taking notes during the a, a documentary about how women get fucked over in the entertainment business. And I just wrote, part of the reason I am so li unlikable is because so many of you refuse to be unlikable for a fucking second. And I stand by that. <laughs> I think it's a good point. <laughs> How you doing? Welcome to another lovely, lively episode of Guys We Fucked. It's the anti-slut shaming podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christine Hutchinson. I was going to start introduce myself as America's most hated podcaster, Corinne oh, Fisher. Fun. Isn't that fun? I'm just leaning in. Honestly, I want to be the Might best well. at something. So if I, I, I'm never going to be the most liked and like ill boring. Um, so I would like to yeah. be the most hated. I'm now Who wants to be liked. I'm now gonna I'm now championing it. it this, it's like it reminds me of when I was in high school and I uh, asked everyone to vote for me for most unique which like is normally the category that no one would want to get because it means you're the biggest freak and i was like campaigning for it and i won by a landslide <laughs> nice nice <laughs> nice graduating class of 620 not an easy feat but i did it true 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 i i got a superlative too it's it's fun to get a superlative it, what it was your superlative most likely to see their name in lights oh you see that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, 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 mine was basically the modern superlative of like most likely to get burned at the stake. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's playing and, out. And mine was, if we don't give this award to her, she might kill herself. Okay. <laughs> Guys, if you want to email us, it's sorry about last night show at gmail.com. Make the subject line interesting. Or you can email us from our website as this gentleman did. There's, so there's no subject line, but he's a 31 year old man. Oh, give it to me. Hello. I'm 31. And I recently, have been trying to get back out on dates again and it's been a very long time since I tried to meet someone new. I was in a relationship for almost nine years and have since been single for four years since the breakup. By choice, getting to find who out who I was again, enjoying things on my own and working on an, in internal issues with myself. I have met a few people here and there, but nothing really made a connection. But then some of my friends set me up on a blind date and I was nervous as hell, but it went great. Not your spelling. Your spelling is bad, but that's okay because mine is too. <laughs> we had talked for three hours and exchanged numbers. I offered to walk her to her car and she was like, you don't have to because it's raining. But I thought that that was the polite thing to do. So we ended up walking to where she was parked. We hugged and we kissed. I was like, whoa, that happened, but in a good way. I'm very bad at picking up social cues. We wished one another a safe drive home. <laughs> How romantic. A few days had passed and we've been texting each other. And I, I just wanted like a simple email. You Hope know? you don't crash. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's such a cryptic thing to say. What is to this? Somebody. The notebook? <laughs> uh, a few days had passed and we'd been texting each other. And I asked again if she would like to have another date. And she was really honest and was feeling overwhelmed with the new apartment and the move. And and a new apprenticeship at a tattoo shop and asked if we could be friends because she needs to get her foot back on the ground with all these life changes happening. And I was like, yeah, no problem. We had continued to talk, but less the, thus like a few times a week, I didn't want to bombard her and make her feel like I was all up in her business. Like, but she was like, hey, you should come up, get a tattoo at some point. And I did. You should get this permanent thing. To <laughs> yeah, so that we could spend some time together and get to know each other. Let me permanently tattoo your skin. Well, it's the worst that could happen. I'm oh. practicing. Oh, my God. The appointment went well. I was her last client of the day, and we had a great time during the session filled with laughter, exchanging music, talking about life, and it felt like a second date. She was left to close up the shop when I was done. After the tattoo she finished, I paid her, and we hugged, and it felt like a longer, more intimate hug. Like no. you would give. Mm -hmm. You paid. You would, you're not dating. If yeah. you would give to someone you like but after the hug we had this awkward exchange of eye contact like should we kiss nope but we didn't. I feel like I should have gone for it, but I also wanted to keep it professional because it was her place of work. Good call. But we have talked since the appointment and I really feel a connection with her and want to tell her how I really feel, but I don't want to lose a friend or sound needy. You're not that close of friends. You have nothing to lose. I want, <laughs> yeah. don't want to lose a friend or sound needy or like I'm not respecting her wishes. What I'm asking for help is should I tell her or wait it out a bit more and see where this friendship goes? Thank you. It's just a nice, simple, hey, I like this chick. What should I do? Email. Uh, and I appreciate that. You have nothing to lose. Just say, hey, I'm, I'm interested in, in taking you out on a second date, but I know you're really overwhelmed at the moment. So, you know, as you get settled in your new environment with all these changes going on, um, let me know. And I'd love to take you out again. 
You don't have anything to lose except for a friendship you didn't want in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> and you uh, apparently the only thing you had to gain was a tattoo. And you did. You already did that. And you so paid for it. You paid for so it. So you didn't really, I mean, you could have gone anywhere. Yeah. Also, the thing is, it's like, it. you know, I, I know there's a lot of um, talk around the phrase uh, friend, being friend zoned and how misogynistic it is. And like, that's the only place that I friend zone uh, so many guys. women have oh, yeah. in men's lives. And I and I do and, and I do uh, agree to a certain extent but I also think that like once you get into these like older years of adulthood you're just not really in the market for, for it's not like when you're a kid when you're always in the market for a new friend mm. so whether you're a man or a woman or whatever your sexual orientation is like I think it's okay to clarify when meeting new people in a romantic with when it has a, a romantic start a romantic lead in as this did that you are merely interested in pursuing pursuing a romantic relationship and it and not a friend and not a friend and that's okay if you don't want a new friend yeah well, I, you're, you're being a very respectful nice young man which right. is nice <laughs> but it's like he's like he but he's like he's saying the you're saying the nice thing but but your last the, your your last sentence says uh uh, waited about out a bit more and see where this friendship goes. Right. And so there's an invisible ellipses there, and that says, "Hopefully in her pants." Yeah, and like you don't, you don't <laughs> seem like that kind of guy. You a pussy, <laughs> but that's what you mean. That's what yeah. you want, though. You know. Yeah. And I don't think that you're like a crude guy and like you only want pussy. I think you do actually want to pursue a real you relationship. Feel a connection with this yeah. person, and you're tr because you're trained as such. You were in a nine year relationship. That's kind of all you know. Right. Your whole adult life, you've been in relationships. So that that's why you're acting politely and not like a fucking. Mom monster um it's good for you yeah but uh yeah but also just as much as um uh you don't know no no man or woman has to be friends with someone that they uh went on a date with and like it it does seem like you're kind of just sticking around for that so like might as well be upfront about it and be yeah. like you know i do like you i like it spending time with you but and, and, and like say it, like don't make it seem like a trick say like the reason that uh i was i went out with you was because i was interested in pursuing a romantic relationship with you and now that some time has passed i'd like to check in again because those feelings still stand That's yeah it. yeah and just make sure she's not keeping you around because she likes somebody who likes her around oh gosh because yeah. you know? yes. as a gal who's done that uh, and I've, I've seen my guy friends go through that and i've seen i've seen it happen in every which way it's not an evil thing to do it's just it's a thing that happens so just be mindful of it that's all i'm not saying that's what she's doing but just be mindful because you know? she kind of did already tell you no yeah like, but but sometimes for me like i know I, I, i'll say friend zone because i don't know if i like you yet you know and i have to like be around you and and watch you exist without the added pressure of is this going anywhere yeah so for me that uh, honestly helps but so here's the caveat to that that i want to ask you christina yes so sir he he approached this uh, reply to the first date asking for a second date. And yeah. Even though she said, I would like to be friends. Yeah. Uh, she could have said, if she doesn't know how she feels about him yet and, yeah. and like thinks maybe he could be a friend, maybe I could be into him, wouldn't you go on the second date instead of saying the right clue, out of the gate? Right. So the clue for me was she said she feels very overwhelmed by her personal circumstances and the things that have changed in her life. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who is currently overwhelmed by my certain uh, present circumstances and has gone on dates during this time like first dates and, and second dates i've i understand just being dizzy from it all and just going i don't know what i'm doing yet can we just exist in a friendship context because i feel a little crazy so i i'm just saying if that's how she's feeling mm -hmm. i could understand that that be the case yeah the problem with personal circumstances is like a lot of times it's someone lying to you but yes. sometimes it's sometimes not. it's not because I, I or sometimes say... maybe or maybe and i just have to find this out i don't like you enough to right. want to get date you like that could also and i think that's case. also that so i think like could you possibly date for a little while yeah but like you deserve someone who's like enthusiastic yeah. about you yeah. is, is kind of what it boils down to when we give advice to anyone yeah 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 somebody who thinks the world of you and then you think the world of them. Yeah. yeah that sounds nice, huh? Mm. And obviously, you know what that's like if you were in a nine-year <laughs> relationship. Mike and I, yeah. yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Please end this wouldn't loneliness. Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> Chad, you can't dock me if I'm singing it like that. <laughs> was oh, that, that the Beach Boys song? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was the, the grunge version. <laughs> wouldn't it be nice if we had a loving partner? <laughs> 
I think uh, I think when Chad was tired of us calling him out in um in the episode, so he wrote us in our last legal email. He's like, we're just gonna say that when you do do your yeah. own interpretations, it's like talking through it. <laughs> yeah, he's like yeah. talking yourself it's out inter- of jumping off I a thought, cliff. I thought he said artistic interpretation. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, oh, he's it's the anti-suicide fire. efforts, yeah. Chad. He, he, Thank you. He goes legally. I think we can just put this under the umbrella of uh, parody and please yes, stop mentioning me parody, during your, right. during your horror show. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. <laughs> Allegedly, Chad called us whores, and I am pissed. JK, Chad, we know you know we won't do you dirty like that. Chad, okay. Chad gets a free ad on every show. I know. Yeah. People we'll just never email. tell you where he works, though. People just Googling Chad lawyer. Yeah, good luck. He's ours. Hope you don't live in Connecticut, asshole. <laughs> Woo! Uh, we're trying. Guys, see us live. Oh, I didn't copy and paste that one date. It's we're going to be in Georgia. In, it's at Atlanta, Atlanta the Center Stage Theater, and it is on September. It's in September. Right. Chad, you can't get mad at me for that either. Right? Because that's September. also not how the song goes. I want to say it's September like 9th or 16th. <laughs> but uh, I- It's not the 16th. It's not the 9th. All right. Well, it's, it's in. Hold on. I thought I put this in my calendar. Hold on. Oh, no, it's the 10th. Sorry. 10th. September 10th. It was a Saturday. <laughs> Atlanta, so Georgia. It's September Saturday, 10th. September 10th, everybody. We're going to be in you. So get get ready. Save the date. Save your dollars. And then we're going to see you there. Uh, I don't think the ticket link is up yet because I checked over the weekend. Uh, it should be up soon. So the second it is, it's going to be on all of our link trees and on Sorry About Last Night. Uh, no. at What's our website? Yeah. Sorry, sorry About, about last, night. last Night. Comedy. <laughs> I want to die, you guys. <laughs> I have been battling such awful thoughts that I'm honestly impressed that I can it's talk. It's sorry about last night, com, uh, comedy.com. Comedy. Com. Com. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. It's oh, look at that beautiful picture it's of us. An, it's an updated, we updated yeah. the, the old website when, for us. when the special came out. Well, we're hot. So it's, oh, I should be happier. Wow. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. So it's a big, uh, a, a big uh, date um, on our hopeful uh, theater tour. So yeah. Atlanta, no um, you're pressure, a- but everything depends on, on you. Yeah. You're one of our <laughs> test markets before a promoter will feel safe enough promoting our theater tour. So please let's sell this out. September 10th, Atlanta, Georgia. We'll see you there. Yeah. It's not easy to get a, a theater tour in the co- times of COVID guys. Yeah. Uh, and also, you can hear us in other places. I have a solo podcast called The Voices in Our Heads. It's available on iTunes for 89 episodes. And all of the most recent episodes are available on patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. And I have at least two um, Zoom dates per month for everybody that's a patron where we um, do group lamenting. I'm not calling it group therapy because I'm not a licensed therapist. But it's group lamenting where I ask you questions about what's going on in your life. And then I forget about my problems for a second. And then we all cry. And it's honestly, it's really cathartic and special. Oh, group lamenting i thought you were it was one word like group lamenting where you just get into a group and compliment each other ew ew like, what? sign oh, me up god what so sign me up group lamenting yeah got group it. lamenting yeah yeah, yeah 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 got it got it got it patreon.com christina hutchinson and See then that. if you want to uh cry about exterior things yeah that's also very healthy but also laugh um you can listen to without a country it is my comedy news show with shane smith it's comedy and news in that we roast the real news it's not comedy news like the onion where it's fake articles so it's real news uh presented to you by comedians and the kind of the the point of the show is to present uh the news the way a regular person would read it we're not pundits we don't have like a a bias other than our own opinions and experiences in our life we're both from different places shane's from utah grew up very poor i'm from new jersey i grew up middle class like i mean i i think it's a a pretty fun show and uh that comes out every saturday on youtube it's called without a country you can also listen to it on apple podcasts or spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts again Mm. that's without a country and if you haven't rated and reviewed Guys We Fucked on the Apple Podcast app and followed us on the Apple Podcast app, please do that. And YouTube.com slash Guys We Fucked, without the U and Fucked, holds a treasure trove of free content, including our special day, the debut comedy special of Corinne Fisher and Christina Hutchinson. Uh, it's self-produced and it's really fucking good. So keep watching it. Keep commenting on it. And uh, you can also get uh, episodes of the Dumb Bitch Woo Woo Hour, which is uh, us being silly and fun. Because if we don't laugh, we'll cry. 
and at least for me and as always uh if you want to get uh, an ad free experience if you want to get episodes a week early and if you want to get uh 20 bonus episodes a year you can become a luminary subscriber by going to luminary.link slash gwf we appreciate anyone who has subscribed so much and as a reminder we now talk about apple podcasts a lot because luminary is an official channel on apple podcasts Okay. Yeah. I know some Luminary subscribers being like, why are you talking about Apple? Mm. It's there because they're joint now. Yeah. Legally joint. Okay. There you go. That's why. They're, everything we say has a reason. All right. I mm-hmm. promise you. Mm-hmm. I promise you the show seems like it's, uh, you know, loose. It's tight. Yeah. Like our <laughs> vaginas. tight. Okay. Because we're not as big a horse as you think. It's tight. Oh, uh, God. How are you? Uh, I'm great. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm okay. I, uh, I just. I'm Check get- this out. Uh, so <laughs> no. so I'm just getting fucking work done. That's like that's yeah. my thing. I'm getting work done, and I uh, every week there is something to be angry about as a woman. <laughs> um, and you know, as the saying goes, if you're not angry, you're not paying paying attention. A hundred percent. I know everyone's like, ah, oh, I, I want to go on Instagram and look for a lipstick <laughs> color, and I want to buy. Fucking, what eyeshadow is that, girl? Like, do whatever you want. Where'd you get your shoes? You do whatever you want. Let me do whatever I want, which okay. is extensive research for fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let oh, her live. Sorry, I don't let her live. Laid back enough for you. Maybe because you know what? If you, someone has to do something other than look at the lipstick. Honestly, color. it's you and, and I still to, have a nice lipstick. You know, color. you know, and you're not going to get to know what it is. There's two women that are right now that are pushing people to be like, you should be mad. And it's you and Greta Thunberg. <sighs> Thank you. Well, oh, Greta, I think she's like, why aren't you more pissed? And I'm like, you're right. You got a point. I mean, I feel like Greta at this point just wanted some days off of school. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a joke about that. I, I go because I was scrolling. I do follow I mean, her on Instagram. I would too. I follow her on Instagram, and it was like you know day three hundred and eighty five of school, cli- so, uh, you know, school strike for climate, and she's like laying in the grass. And I go, oh, this she's pulling a Ferris Bueller on. Her. <laughs> <laughs> she really is a genius. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She got I knew it. it. I knew it. She re- yeah. No, she's smart as fuck. Okay. Um. So yeah, I uh, I, I I've. I just like really want to take in content where I, I learn more and specifically about being a woman um, in the world and in the entertainment business, because I want to, that's what I do. That's what I do for a living. Mm-hmm. And I want to be really well informed about it. And um, I, I mentioned on without a country that there's so many problems in the world. And I think I mentioned this. Yeah. I mentioned this on guys. We fucked a couple weeks ago that it's, you, you become overwhelmed very easily. Like yes. you have to store my life. Uh, I mean, I was reading about recycling this weekend and it's like a lot of re- recycling, especially of plastics is kind of called like wish cycling. And like, it has to be dry. It has to be all these things. So a lot of the, t- this, the time we're spending on recycling, we should have just not. It's a waste. Um, mm. Yeah. It's, it's a waste. really It's a waste. Pun fully intended. Intended. And uh, I didn't even mean it. Um, wow. and, and so there's so much things to do. And then, you know, and then there's school shootings and active shootings and shootings in supermarkets and uh, Black Lives Matter and it's Pride Month. And it's like, it's overwhelming so how many hatred. things you have to care about. Um, and, yes. I, and I really, really do feel, and this is again, this is just the way I have decided to go about it, um, is like, I think we should all care about something other than our own families and selves, because yeah. that's what that's not fucking being a an, an activist, which we call it now, because people need titles to feel like they're like, you know, they need a title to to do something nice. Like, oh, mm. give me a label so I can feel amazing about the nice thing I'm doing. I fucking hate when people call us activists. We're just active, concerned fucking citizens, as everyone should be. Yeah. Um, and so what I realized is like, I just need to focus in on on one area where I can actually make a difference, be really well versed in it uh learn as much as i can about it so for me that is going to be women's issues and feminism and that's it that's it i'm taking this to the grave that's it i'm going to do some dog an animal rescue along the way honestly that's more like for me and because i love being around animals and i think we treat them badly but that's not like what i'm going to be outspoken about as much um and so i leaned into that a lot uh, over the weekend, ordered a lot of feminist literature, and uh, additionally watched a not Netflix documentary, which I cannot believe I haven't watched yet because it's right up my alley. It screams my name, uh, which is This Changes Everything. Mm-hmm. And it's about uh, women in the entertainment business, uh, a lot about directors. And for those of you who don't know, I have a BFA in directing from the School of Visual Arts, shout out SVA, class of 2007. Woo. And um, so I'm really invested and interested in, in this. And 
and I uh, highly recommend that you all watch it because I think a, a lot of times what I've noticed from being in the entertainment business so long and also before that being so obsessed with it is that when we talk about celebrities and we talk about uh, the entertainment business, we're all kind of a part of it because as consumers, you guys are very much a part of it. Obviously, oh, yeah. you drive it. Yeah. Um, but I think that you're driving an industry that you know very little about. And I don't say that in like a shitty demeaning way. It's just like from someone on the inside, seeing the way that you talk about it, you think it's a lot like less contrived than it is. I mean, it, it, it just I mean, if if there's kind of a metaphor for the entertainment business, it's when we were all watching uh, Laguna Beach and we thought it was real for a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the yeah. whole business. Because one time I did see Kristen at a bar and Steven in Laguna Beach, and I was like, oh my god, they're friends. That's yeah. crazy. Oh, I was with you, right? Wait, wait, wait. I think so. Oh, oh, and then oh, there was a, no, and there was another time We've I think met a couple of those cast members along. Yeah, when I was like low. with my mom, and I saw them at gas station or something. But yeah, they're uh, and so that's just it, it is what it is, and you know that if there's anything that is like less important well i think it's kind of important that i'm well versed in it's celebrity like that's yeah. what two less lonely girls was all about and so uh yeah and they and they talk a lot a lot about in this documentary about the film uh thelma and louise which is very close to christina and my mm. hearts and <clears throat> And uh, it, that changed Gina Davis's life. That film changed her life. And part of what changed her life about it was that she realized um, that people hadn't really seen strong female uh, characters in movies before. Like if you watch movies, a lot of times women's are, women are a secondary character. I mean, until modern times, we've changed it a little bit. But if you just do it by like a numbers game, even in recent years, uh, there's still so many more male driven films than female driven films films yeah. and and then it's and then if we go from uh on screen to off screen now the numbers are doubling tripling quadrupling of how many men versus how many women on set um and so the film kind of just talks a lot about how when directing started it was mostly a women's game actually because they thought it was just going to be like some silly thing and then when the movie business really took off uh then we're like now we do it yeah men booted all the women out because they realized that it was going they were going to get fame they were going to get money it was going to be a fucking big big deal but if you go back to the silent era <laughs> ironically <laughs> uh, it was full of women um and uh and it's proven in this thing that they describe in the in the documentary called the csi effect that when we see women or anyone for that matter but in, this was specifically talking about women when we see women doing things like being a forensic uh you know researcher or being a lawyer or being something other than a housewife or a mom nothing wrong with those things but that's what well, kind of all we've seen for um many years prior uh it, it really does it truly encourages women to pursue those things in real life so strong women characters actually create strong women in society. It's, a, it's an imprint on society because it's, it's also like that with non-white people. You see non-white exactly. people be criminals in every fucking movie. You're like, exactly. are you, come on. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same it's the same exact things. Um, and, you, you know, yeah. you know, they talk about the, the Bechdel test. Obviously, we know about that, which just means that it has to have one scene where two women are talking about something other than a dude. It's very <laughs> crazy how hard that test uh, is to pass. Um, and I think that the main thing that's the call to action that I wanted to talk about from this film is such a simple thing that everyone can do. So on Rotten Tomatoes, which is the website that that, you know, uses uh, viewers to rate movies. It's like we become Siskel and Ebert ourselves. 77.8 uh, percent of the registered users on Rotten Tomatoes are men. OK, oh. and that's a problem because it a lot of people go to Rotten Tomatoes to see what films to see. Wow. And no matter what you know no matter how progressive you are we all have um a, a bias and <laughs> i would like to say that women's bias is towards women but i don't mm, actually no feel i that think we way. internalize the sexism that's I feel uh, like everyone's, hoisted upon us yeah i feel like everyone's bias is towards men and i remember years ago learning about this in film school from the most feminist professor i had and i'm sure i met her with a little bit of eye rolling back then because she did say things like herstory long before we've been saying herstory on tote bags and so i laughed at it then because i always am like oh, was a fucking cheeky cunt um <laughs> but I, I i was really thinking about it and one thing that she said with me that stuck with me all these years is that 
women get paid less and are their are their films do less good sometimes a lot of times like in the box office it has been shown that like people do like to see female led films but it still doesn't it still doesn't tilt the industry to make more of them um but women heterosexual women are always willing to go see a film with their boyfriend so a lot of these like mm-hmm. marvel movies the superhero movies any of these they're always doing well because they're selling like double the tickets but the rom-coms the female the, the art house films or whatever it is that, that women stereotypically like to see the men aren't returning the favor mm-hmm. and not only is that fucking unjust in your relationship but it's unjust because it makes it, it it continues to feed misogyny in the entertainment business and i know this is a heavy way to think about a friday night at the movies but bitches that's who i am you know me by now it's been almost a decade of doing this show everything i think about is heavy i'm sorry i don't know what to tell you yeah. um and it's important and so uh register yourself on Rotten Tomatoes to be a reviewer. We need more women reviewers on Rotten Tomatoes yeah. and give amazing um, female directed, female led films a, that you like. That you like, not just shit ones. Yeah. A good rating. Yeah. It's like a moment out of your day. It's yeah. this little thing because I know we always feel so <sighs> overwhelmed with everything that we like, all these things we have to do. And I was like, and when I saw that, Mm, in the uh, yeah. in the documentary, I go, what a small thing that we can all yeah. do that really can change uh, the entertainment business. I want to do that for The Fallout because that was written and directed by a woman. Mm-hmm. The Fallout. That was such a fucking good movie. Yeah. That's and- a great, that's a great, uh, to do yeah and the G- to Gina Davis in- Institute is so interesting because number one oh god it made me fall in love with Gina Davis all over again she's the best uh, yeah. and then you know after what Thelma and Louise she does A League of Their Own so yeah. another the fucking uh, they're remaking it as a TV show right now so excited about that um, and uh, a lot of female directors got together um, to prove this and they and they tried suing and there's a lot of legal stuff that goes on but the movie also reminded me that feelings are not facts and how important important facts are and I would never want to shit on women for being more emotional um, but what you have to do when you have a feeling is you do have to follow it up with a fact just like men men do men men also have feelings they're just a lot of times like yeah. ones like anger well and my, <laughs> you know? my, my saying is always feelings aren't facts but they are clues so they're going to lead you to something and a lot of times our feelings are related to something that's not related to the fact like just something old that, but, yeah. but you you owe it to yourself to figure that out yeah your feeling can be an alarm and the right. alarm can and then you and then, to and then follow the alarm and look it up online and say is that is that alarm cueing me to something that I need to know about and a lot of times it is but uh, it's really hard to dispute facts and that's how they fought this and they started getting people including Mm. the head of FX to be like we have the numbers to prove that what you're saying because people just make false claims they say oh we're putting so much more women in fucking just look on TV the credits are there they can't hide it when you once you write it down right and like yeah is it annoying and and painstaking and, and and takes up time to do this research absolutely but it's like if we want to get ahead we we gotta do we well, gotta and, do more than write a po- write a glitter on a poster board yeah yeah I'm sorry. and, and we you're, do and you're improving your sense of efficacy of self-efficacy of your effectiveness in the world which will build on your self-esteem which is also a direct way of making the world a better place mm-hmm. so all around really good really good things to do thank you corinne <laughs> You're welcome. You know what? That's great. And we're going to leave it at that because uh, we have a guest that, uh, you know, sometimes I think to myself, I want to have this person on the podcast. And then a lot of times we make that happen. And this is one of those instances. And I'm really proud of us. And uh, we have a really great conversation. Um, all I'm going to say about this guest is he's the host of a infrequent podcast, <laughs> Pot of Wine, <laughs> that only has 1,500 listens. So go on ahead and go to Apple Podcasts and figure that out. And um, he's also the lead singer of this little band called Third Eye Blind. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Stephen Jenkins. <laughs> Anyway, so Jean-Michel Basquiat, yes, protege or collaborator with uh, Warhol. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, he was very pro- prolific and Warhol was like, I'm going to make one of these things and then sell 30,000 copies of it. And mm. um, Basquiat was, I'm going to turn on shitty television in my place and I'm just going to do stuff and do stuff and do stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's going to sell for $110 million. What a life. Good yeah. plan. Well, I mean, it, it, he wasn't thinking that. He was just he was just turning it out. And that's an idea that I really like and uh, want to be just 
I'm kind of more in that mode now. What? Like I, like, as an artist. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Don't, Do uh, making stuff. So Virgil Abloh, I think that's how I pronounce it. Um, he's the off white designer who recently died. Mm -hmm. And, um, he said, he said, um, everything is prototype. Yeah. Which is really liberating, which means there is no, you're not going to, it's not done. There's no arrival at it. This mm -hmm. is just the iteration that we're doing now. Yeah. 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 It's so, easy to get obsessive over art and too nitpicky. It is for me. And I can, it can make me just not do anything at all. Yeah. A long time. Sucks or the joy it just out. makes you go like, catch in the, the flow. moment, Try gift in the, the universe, flow. off we go. Turn well, a lot of it one. is just like, yeah, Last waiting, year. like uh, waiting and like, mm -hmm. oh, that I, I can think of a better idea. I can think of a better idea. And then you just end up not doing anything because no idea is like good enough. That's what I come across a lot. Yeah. Yep. Or make it better. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make it better. I'm going to make it just right. Yeah. Do you beat yourself up? Uh huh. Yeah. How often? <laughs> I do all the time. And now it begins. Yeah. Let's get into <laughs> it. You beat yourself up. I um I used to beat myself up a lot, a lot of self recrimination and now there's a lot less. How did you overcome that? Uh I think it's because I went to an osteopath. Oh. I swear to God. Wow, then, didn't expect that. And then fucking Phoebe Bridgers put it in her song. <sighs> She got it first. Like oh, shit. the doctor put her hand on my liver, said my resentments um, getting like weaker or something. Yeah. My resentments, which happened to me. Wow. Yeah. Did you pinpoint the like, the I root of the resentment? I had that in my journal. <laughs> that was ready to go in for a song. <laughs> Damn. And now you can't use it. No, it's in Garden Song, mm. and it's such a good song. Yeah. yeah. It's such a good song, mother. Fucker. Nice. So I can't write about my experiences with an osteopath because taken. But you could use you like can. just maybe like can't. just I mean, creativity is taking something that's, that's been done a million times but putting your own thing on it. No, the, I'd be a clout chaser. I'd just be like, there's really no way. a I clout chaser. This is my. You own, already proved you're not. This is already my authentic experience that like rearranged my life and made me like emerge back into a creative flow state and i can't talk about it because <laughs> phoebe did first okay okay i understand that it's, we thought we couldn't start a podcast 10 years ago and then we and now did. you guys have your own studio half this. studio yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as we look into this is a, others that's not this ours, is what i this expected is ours. What, what did you expect yeah walk us through what you thought the studio Please. was gonna be like just shittier <laughs> <laughs> thank you steven yeah thank you so much now do you did you uh wow. I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you remember this. I feel like Chris Farley interviewing Paul McCartney on SNL. Uh, but in your concert at uh, in New York City, uh, I was shining the light on myself. Did you see that? No. No, you didn't see it. Right. How would I see? That? Because in the front row, you gave shining me on. a weird look. I did. Yeah, but you maybe you were thinking about other stuff, which makes sense. You were working. I basically I was like, how am I going to stand out? So I took the flashlight on my phone, mm -hmm. pointed it at me. And then when you were going over saying hi to people, I'm like, hi. And then I was blinding myself. So I couldn't see if you looked at me. But Corinne said you looked at me and you were perplexed. If you want to stand <laughs> out to somebody at a concert, just stop paying attention. Just look away. <laughs> that, and then that's what that gets your artist, attention. Right? Wow. Yeah. Self-absorbed artist. On yeah. Do you mean? Be, yeah. Why is she fucking looking away? What do I have? And they'll start. Yeah. We should have known that being comedians. That was good, Christina. Right. Yeah, this is my strategy you know, the for one the interview. In, the one in the audience who's like, <laughs> who you're not getting. Right. That one, and you just start. As a comedian, I very much relate. Them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how you're a very woo woo guy. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Woo woo is the word that my uh, Republican father calls my interest in spirituality. Uh, but like, just like healing and stuff like that. Like your the themes of your songs and the titles of your Astrology, songs. Astrology, crystals. Yeah, just universe. like otherworldly shit. Mm. Is that accurate to say? You talk about astrology. You sung about astrology, and yeah. just like you know, and you know the name of your band. But I also <laughs> sing about you know that. <laughs> yeah. Third eye. Yeah. Blind. Spiritual. <laughs> Well, third eye blind, like right. It's like, going, like yeah. to me that implies like, spiritual like congestion. Rock, but it's all, it's it's poking it in the eye because um, I think all that stuff's bullshit. Okay, so you're not. You wouldn't describe yourself as woo woo. No. Okay. No. Uh, uh, you, Christina's heart's breaking. I'm, no, it's okay. I'm, I, I don't have any I'm, expectations. I'm more. I'm more. I'm more intrigued. Okay. Have you ever had an otherworldly experience? Like with a healer? This is the moment where you meet me and get let down. That's, oh, I have no <laughs> expectations. Like, you can't let me down. <laughs> I don't know. 
it's the pheromones or something. Um, no, I, 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 um, I, I, I sing about things that can work as metaphors or that, um, uh, intrigue me in some way or that, that expand it in some ways. But, okay. um, when I sing about uh, astrology, uh, I was thinking about it in the song God of Wine, where I'm saying it's it's fraudulent. It's it's okay, but I like it. Yeah, and when people are talking about it. oh, you know, uh, we're we're in uh, the moon is in the house of Sagittarius <laughs> or whatever whatever they say right now, which is explains why we can't understand each other. Right, right, right. I love it. Yeah, I'm okay. here for it. I'm entertained by it. Yeah, I love it when somebody's really good at reading uh, tarot cards or. Um, I mean, the symbol of our band is a is a Dolly tarot card. Uh, it's the it's the death it, it's the death card has mm. a little sparrow that looks like it's dying or something, mm -hmm. and that's called we call it the falling man, and we stole it and <laughs> nice. blew it up, and that's kind of our that's yeah that's so the you, symbol of our band. Yeah, yeah. So, but you're into like spirituality a lot, like meditation, right? I'm into meditation. To me, that goes. But hand I'm really in hand. into science. I mean, science is also. Great. Yeah, I'm, I mean, uh, I, I, I guess, I guess the the reason why I bridle a little bit at this is because if anybody says anything, yeah, everything happens for a reason. I, I fucking, I can't. I have to quit. I yeah. have to fold right there. It's, yeah. Um, if there's a way that you can use, um woo woo as you say to to skate out of it to dodge it right. anything like that i'm not there for it if yeah. you're entertained by it mm -hmm. um if you um if if you do it and it sort of provokes conversation where we can get down to something that actually philosophically expands things or we get down to a deeper connection communication great right then then it's then it's good yeah but otherwise to me it's it's kind of entertainment for sure and when people actually live in it i like patchouli it's good <laughs> <laughs> you so you talk about i watched the uh deep cuts about motorcycle drive-by it's a beautiful piece um you talked about protecting your energy before a show oh what is <laughs> i hate that movie Oh, okay. Well, I look really bloated. You really are film. disappointing me. Thanks. No, <laughs> no. It's just because it's just when I look at it, I'm just like, God, touring's bad for you. Yeah. Listen, we. I, yeah. It's like the I hear end you. of the tour. And I'm just like, I have to protect my energy. <laughs> yeah. You know, play the like, song where you wrote the song. I'm okay. dead on the couch. Yeah. Right. Right. What right, was right. it? Was it drinking or just a lot of salt? What's going? What? I mean, it's it, grueling on your body. A lot of salt. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's, you gotta lay back on that. <laughs> I like soft. Well, I what I was going to ask. Touring is a salty experience. I bet. <laughs> what does that mean? Nothing. I just thought oh, it was funny on. to say. Uh, what I was going to ask you, though, is when you step on stage, you're a woman's energy, women fans, female mm. fans, which we have a lot of female fans. Uh, we go do theaters and stuff. Like, it's it's mostly women. Mostly women. Their energy is intense. Women's energy is intense. And they don't even really want to fuck us for the most part. There's I know. A couple, Some of them. Lesbians in training. Like, we, I've only been scared for the most part by couple, women. I think you'd be surprised. No, no, no. I'm not. They DM me, so I'm not surprised. But just you, still. I not think you could get highly spectrumed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But when a when 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 you come out and you're playing like the, if you said at a show, raise your hand just in a pinch. How many of you women would fuck us? You'd get a lot of hands up. We'd also get we'd yeah, also get an article written in about us being predators. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, too. And then <laughs> that would be the end of your career. Yeah, Nothing everyone would be them. like, they finally did it. It's those whores. I'm sorry and goodbye. <laughs> those sluts have something. Good night, everybody. But what I was gonna say is, when women want to have sex with you, and they're like, I've witnessed it. Like, it's an intense energy. Yeah. When a woman wants to fuck. And they're like determined. This is a very specific type of energy that I'm talking about. It's a lot. And so when you step out on stage, I can't imagine you're not getting bombarded by that. <clears throat> How do you deal with that? And does it like does it ruin like does it affect your sexuality? In no, any way? I pulse it up inside me. I gather it all, and then I fire it out like a you cannon. Just, oh wow! You just jerk off I'm on just everybody or sex, big through your voice. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> like is that, does it feel overwhelming, or do you kind of? I don't know. Do you feel it? Use it as power. You like it? Yeah. 
Is it fun? I do like it. Okay. Um, Thank you for admitting that. Yeah. I mean, I hope you do. Mm -hmm. Um, And, um, but the real answer is going to be kind of boring. That's all right. Be boring. Okay. I'm kind (laughs) of like a chef. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah. I don't think anyone could be boring with a a purse. purse. Yeah. I call it a purse too. It's It's a a fucking purse. It's not a purse. It's a purse. That's yeah, sexist right. to call it a purse. I'm it's so purse. sorry. I wear purses. I like purses. Yeah, me too. I don't know. It's yeah, nice. I don't know how you can carry all your stuff in your pockets. I, yeah, I try I to do it all the time because I, I wear purse. hate purses. Yeah, good and then for you. you. Have to call it, it's, it's your like man bat. I don't know. Your man bat. <laughs> that sounds worse. It's yeah, purse. it's a purse. You're proud. Yeah. Do it. Happy wear Pride. That purse. Yeah. yeah. Happy Pride. Happy June. Happy Pride. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> where were we? Oh yeah. So. So what I'm trying to do is create a collective experience um, because I think that's why people go and see live music. That's why they spend so much money. Mm-hmm. It's not for it's it's not so they can just see the band. It's so that they can see it with other people that they don't know. Yeah, um, that's the same exact thing they taught us in film school. Like why people go to the movies is because you want to experience that art surrounded by other people, even though sometimes other people are irritating. And why? Just because be- they talk. Because it, it actually cha- like it, it supposedly changes how you how you take it in. And I mean, certainly, I think the the biggest example of that is a horror movie. Watching a horror movie with other people yeah. is a way more fulfilling experience than yeah. watching a horror movie uh, with like a boyfriend on a couch. I mean, depending. I on like what, the boyfriend on the couch on one. Depending on what you're looking to get out of the experience, guys. Yeah, if you're trying to finger someone, deal with your boyfriend exactly, on the couch. But exactly. if you're trying to have a collective experience, if you're trying to get actually scared in in a way where you're like be scared to go to your car in an audience, I love it. Right. You look perplexed. <laughs> no, I'm try- I, I'm thinking if it's if it's the same thing, and I think it is the mm-hmm. same thing. Yeah. Well, you're, and also too with your songs, they're so they they're really deep in in people's souls. So they're also this collective experience of singing a song that they love together with the person who wrote the song. You know. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Just came here to feel good about myself. Yeah. <laughs> you came to this the right nice. place. You did. You that's, really did. That's her expertise. This is the best podcast ever. I Clip love it. That. Clip that. Um, I, I, I feel <laughs> we, we like we did uh, start telling people that already. We already we already said that uh, guys we fucked is their favorite, yeah. favorite podcast. Yeah, we just it, took that liberty and we're yeah. big fans. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, yeah. good. That's yeah. awesome because we've been saying it a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> because what I like about you guys is like that wrong thing that you're really not supposed to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's we'll say, say it early and often. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to be so, here. Fuck. Okay. Uh, Gleefully yeah, with cheer. Uh huh. Yep. 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 <laughs> Back to the boring part. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So, so we go to concerts um, because music makes us feel things. Muse. It brings it brings about the muse. Mm-hmm. And um, and then we we when we're around people we begin to have feelings and then we have them collectively. And there's this moment where people lift up out of their, out of themselves and you see their faces change. And when their faces change, everybody becomes beautiful. They become beautiful and their, their shoulders soften and they give up their real estate, Mm -hmm. right? They, they just, all that fades away. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is they're having a, um, collective feeling and it's of not being alone mm-hmm. so everyone feels so lonely they they feel there's they they're not alone and what i'm trying to do is is be as present and and sober and looking right at you mm-hmm. which you <laughs> I missed it because I was blinding myself with my flashlight. Right. So, but I'm yeah. doing it now. So this is um, nice. So it's it, so I'm 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 trying to get that mm-hmm. feeling happening, yeah. and I'm not actually I'm not actually um, actually engaged in like a flirtation. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm going to tell I'm myself actually, otherwise. But yeah, I'm actually trying to like I'm I'm actually trying to be, and the the way to do it is for me to be as present and relaxed and genuine and in the song in the song and then in it with you mm-hmm. in it with you like that that feeling and, that's and i nice. love that it's intimate it's kind of my life's work i 
or realized. Yeah. You know, it's 25 years into my band. So, yeah. It's interesting that you say that because I, and I've talked about this on this show a lot, and sometimes people understand what I'm saying and sometimes they don't, but sorry, my life. Uh, I... I, I love live music. It's pro my favorite thing. I always say if I was a good singer, you wouldn't see me on a comedy stage at all. I would be singing. It's just like, I don't know. Like there's so many comedians who are good singers and I don't know why they're comedians. Uh, but that being said, I feel, I feel other people's loneliness so heavily at concerts. And sometimes it actually takes away. Like when someone's singing a sad song, do you ever feel people's loneliness or do you oh, only yeah. take it okay because it's like it's overwhelming to me well third eye blind bands are a lonely bunch <laughs> uh-huh that's for sure yeah yeah well, we're, we're kind of starved of love a lot yeah. most of us are and it's so sad yeah. that's why live music is so powerful it's my favorite thing yeah there's definitely do you feel lonely no wow that's amazing i've really no. have, did you ever i was feel there lonely in, in your... groups though sometimes and i yeah, realize me too, yeah. this because me too. i think i'm i'm kind of uh, uh, uh there's a part of me that's um i'm definitely an introvert even though it doesn't seem that way yeah um, I, I get that and um there's a part of me that is kind of an observer and i move into an observer role and i realize that um there's some people i know who uh like I know somebody and she she thinks that she has to be uh, she, that she has to talk loud and she's got to have the, the the witty thing to say and deliver the goods. And she's actually not that witty. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> and she's kind of a she's kind of like a quiet nerd. Uh huh. And that's what I love about her. Yeah. So the thing is what her like some aspect i mean we all have lots of different aspects of our nature but one aspect of her nature is that she's kind of quiet and you know i don't i don't have the super catchy thing to say here mm -hmm. and i just i i just love her for that yeah for me there's a part of me that is that the group's going like we're 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 out at a bar last night and i'm with my bandmates and and um we're just getting just dirty and into it. And nice. there's a moment where I kind of recede and become the observer. And I don't think that there's going to be somebody who looks at me and goes, I love you for that. That's what I like about you. And that makes me feel lonely. Hmm. And I'm going to write a song about that. Shit. Yeah. So feeling seen for your observing and Phoebe, nature. You can't have that. You heard it here first, Phoebs. Sorry. She also she also really likes ASMR uh, massage. She'll maybe get on that. Wait, an before. ASMR massage? Yeah, I watched a whole video of her receiving one, and it was. Is that when someone massages you while whispering in your ear? It's well, it's using the ASMR to give a massage, but you're sitting up. You're not like it's not like a laying down massage. Ooh. It's a lot of noises, a lot of tingling stuff. Anyway, that's not what it's about. Um, there is someone out there who will love you for that because one time I was looking, uh, I was at a party with my favorite ex and. I looked over and in the middle of a crowded party in a really trendy like New York City club, he was he had found a book that was supposed to be decorative and he was reading it in the middle of the party. <laughs> and I said, that's why I'm dating you. Yeah. So someone will love yeah. you for that. Well, also, too, how often do we observe like that? <laughs> Are you giving yourself a hug? Yeah, because that's quirky. That's not going to work. <laughs> that's cool <laughs> as fuck. That guy is dope. <laughs> But don't sound bite that. We can't let him know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll get to his head. It'll get to his head for sure. Yeah, that's like, that's cool. For me, I'm just actually just sitting back watching the party. Right. Yeah, I don't think it's cool. It's just my nature. <laughs> yeah. Well, was Was there ever a battle for you to get to your gen genuine self, like when you were a teenager, when oh, you were? Of course. How How did that go? It went poorly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Is I'm just for, starting to yeah. learn who I am. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, honestly, I kind of I went to this osteopath uh, because I um, went to a doctor uh, who said you have um, some problem with your liver. That is uh, the signature of it is 
commensurate with uh, early childhood trauma. Mm. And I'm going to recommend that you go to an osteopath. Hmm. I don't know what an osteopath, I still don't know what. I was going to ask you, but I won't. I'll I don't know. Okay. I don't understand. I know, I need osteopath. to go now. You're gonna, so many people who listen to this are going to be like Googling osteopath. Yeah, heading go, I got a go lot ahead of childhood Google trauma. Because it didn't help me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it but going to wait, but going to see the doctor helped you. You said yes. Yeah, like he, yeah. He just put his hands on you. What did he do? I, I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what the fuck he did. Okay, but it worked. But I want more. <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah, it was great. But Very wait, nice. so wait, you said it didn't help you. Though. I'm confused. No, the it googling. Helped me a lot. The googling oh, 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 of it didn't oh, oh, help. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, no, there was thought. this process. I where it was he's like, like okay. and, and 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 the thing is, like, I'm. I'm I'm very wary of uh, touchy feely stuff or people being like 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 overly nice. Um, <laughs> you are. Yeah, I don't like nice. Okay. I think nice is fucked up. And yeah. I think nice people. It's um, like hiding something. I think they're trying to get something from me. Oh yeah. And yeah. I'm being worked. Mm. Kindness is different. Sure. Right. Kindness has like. Kind, it's selfless. Yeah. Nice wants something. So when people are like, yeah. oh, hi, it's so good to see you, know, just like that that whole thing, it just immediately makes me anxious. You go, oh. um, so I go in there a bit wary and I don't I don't tell him what's wrong with me and I made sure that the doctor didn't tell him either. And That's uh smart. and so he said, What's wrong? And I said, Well, I, I broke my neck surfing and i have this neck pain and he looked it over and i said i, I don't like chiropractory i think it's pointy tin hat shit and he uh he goes he goes oh yeah we can fix that i'll fix that and he pulled my fucking head off and put it back on nice and he goes it's fixed you don't have to come back you don't need to do anything else wow and it's never bothered me again wow wow and then um he's kind of he's kind of like putting his hands over me i don't i don't know what he's doing it's just like it's just not a big deal like mm. and he goes "Ooh, liver's all fucked up and that's how he said it <laughs> <laughs> i love when doctors talk like, like that yeah. i do i appreciate just, it he was just kind of a dude yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> like he's wearing a he's wearing a flannel like he's just kind of norcal <laughs> and wow and he goes "Ooh, liver's all fucked up liver's all fucked up like that he's kind of talking to himself <laughs> and then he starts asking me questions and then we time travel back to when i was six years old wow. and now i'm back now i'm in this deep state of being six years old at this moment where some like something was severed and he said and you just kind of gave up on yourself yeah and wow. there's that little boy that's still you but i don't even know where he is now because i'm i'm fully in this kind of zone and he uh um he he said do you do you this is this is, sounds really weird i am into childhood trauma no, a lot because i have a lot of it so i've uh, understanding the vernacular surrounding childhood trauma has healed me so i'm like grief i'm going through a grieving process at the moment but through uh, over trauma shit. so i you're speaking my language with this he says do you have a message can you see can talk you, to him can you see this this boy and he, like he seemed to know stuff too hmm. um because we have a brother um i guess he could have looked that up but uh <laughs> come to think of <laughs> wait a second oh no uh, so um tricked by a medium uh, he uh but he he sees this scenario that's very accurate mm. um about the two of us is in this kind of moment and says do you have a do you have a a mess it's it's me and uh do you have a message um uh oh he he, he said can you see yourself and mm. um and uh you know because i'm a man and there's another man it's very uncomfortable for me to emote or cry like it just it's not done um so it's very tight about what i could say and yeah. uh um can you see him um what does he look like and this is me as uh, six years old and i said he's beautiful and there's this like this little boy and do you have a message and i had a message wow but i couldn't say it 
You could say it in your head. I, 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 it's private. I said it in my head. Yeah. Yeah. Which was, but I couldn't say it at that time because I was just, tears were kind of streaming down yeah, my face. And, and I said, uh, I'm going to protect you. And mm -hmm. I became in my yeah. life this bodyguard for this little boy that is me. I'm walking around with these two different people mm -hmm. um, for a while. And I came, I came back from that session and uh, this friend of mine, she sees me and she goes, she has no idea what's going on. She goes, oh my God, you're so cute. <laughs> yeah, you're glowing. You have, your face is more relaxed. You're... But she didn't say glowing or relaxed. She said cute. Like a child, like your little boy. Yeah. He's comfortable yeah. showing up. You're so cute. And she like hugged me and she goes, you're, you're so... and it was such a strange thing to say, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Inner child works intense. I'm not cute. And but it's, you would it's not a thing you say to a grown man, yeah. No. So <laughs> and then she, you know, so like <laughs> yeah, so I become cute and uh and it, she was seeing something. I'm walking around as this like kind of, you know, Pinocchio where like I'm holding these two different things together and I'm seeing things as this little boy and then as this adult bodyguard protecting uh this boy and then sort of over time these things became knitted together nice and i started writing more and being more um a better musician a be better on stage just more whoa what was that it's like a fucking seance that was wild here. that was that was that was, your, that was your inner little boy playing the Ouija board. <laughs> I just dropped a mic. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so that so that's it. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's this book that I read called The Tao of Fully Feeling by this guy named Pete Walker, and he was like, most children experience like really painful childhoods where we're kind of deprived of love, and we we miss out on grieving these losses. When we think of grief, we think of grieving death, but we we rarely do we pause to grieve one of the greatest losses that can happen in a child's life, and that's the death of a parent's goodwill, and so that took me and hooked me and whew, uh it's a lot it's really intense work to do but then you find this playfulness comes back into your spirit and you can exist with people and you're not so protective of everything right. and you can just be it's really nice and you don't want to fight at traffic stops <sighs> yeah i still have road rage but uh, i'm working on that part yeah did you have a lot of anger before you went to the osteopath that you yeah didn't yeah because you see you you have a very calm energy now mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I've never met you previously, but and did that go away like overnight or was it more? It just kind of receded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that with age, like getting older, you kind of are just more comfortable with yourself and you don't have much to fight against? Mm -mm. No, it's just more. I think it was kind of more of that process. Uh, so much goes back to that. Mm -hmm. To yeah. childhood stuff? Just goes back to that, that, that integration of of self yeah. just the idea that that child right that's you who um was in some way you know emotionally temporarily abandoned mm -hmm. um disregarded uh is there and is um capable of rejoining you in a uh, whole state. You still are that child. That's the thing that I didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah. You're like that Russian doll. You're like those dolls. Like you're, they're all a part of you. They're all like layers of you. But when one of the layers is angry or bitter or in, has inner terror, it's difficult to go about the world. <laughs> it does good for your art though, in my experience. It really makes good musicians. Yeah. I don't know any good musicians who aren't fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> um, you both seem like cheerful people. Um, but that's you're, the wrong read. But you're, but you're, <laughs> well, you're working right now, right? So well, like, also, you haven't said anything that me like me roll my eyes in my head. So it's very much based on it's like you, I, I, what I receive is what I'm going to give back. So when people come on the show and like act like a cunt to me, I just go, okay, just be a cunt. Yeah. Do you get a lot of cunty people on the show? No, people are cunts Those to probably her to like, her face. Really, really make uh, that makes a good show though. <laughs> I try my best wrong. not to fight on air. I've only done it two times in almost a decade, so I think that's pretty good. Oh, have yeah, I? and I was like, uh, 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 I'm you're gonna wearing, go. I hate this. You're wearing camo, like, like, <laughs> fuck, it's on. Fli flip it. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. No. 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 How does uh, fame affect your sex life? 
I don't know. Well, you had sex before you were famous, yeah? I did my best. <laughs> Good for you. You never really had sex until you were famous. You yeah, weren't really you, fucking until you, you were You can't fronting. fucking tell you're famous. So yeah. for the rest of you, sorry, sons of bitches. <laughs> Well, you're yeah, talking about people wanting things from you like, ah, oh, that's weird. Like, I mean, I imagine it's it's great to be sexualized. Like in, in our culture, men are not as sexualized as much as women. But you are in a mm. position where as a man, you are sexualized by women, which is that's a that's a specific vibe. Like, how do you deal with that? I think being famous is insane. It's wild. It's and a mental I illness to be, almost. Uh, I wanted to be famous and then I became famous and I checked the box. Yeah. And then there's a like there's a something that you turn on and you light up and um i turn that on when i walk on stage and i turn it off when i walk off yeah and people who need that reflecting back at them and i've certainly known a lot of famous people who do what do you, how do you mean like they need to be treated that way off stage yes. in other words oh i see yes. yeah are insatiable up. ego yeah yeah they need to reflect it back to them they need to work the room yeah uh, they need to have it um god i know this actor she's so famous she's had so many academy awards I, she just gets on my tits i just can't take it <laughs> on your tits yeah just just like fuck what, did she just squeeze like, them just just like just bugging me like just like because she's cause she's in the room and she's working it <laughs> right, you right, know? right she's doing it <laughs> yeah and i'm not asking any questions you know yeah so, steven pay more attention to me just all of that like that whole thing and yeah. uh it's just yeah it's annoying i imagine it's annoying but it's it. also like you don't you don't you're not a person any, anything you're not actually having impact with people yeah so you're desperately lonely you're 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 unsatisfied and um everybody needs to applaud so that's yeah. that's being famous yeah um and you have to fight against that to really enjoy your life right i mean or you have to like be you have to be on top of checking in with yourself with that and with your e i imagine it's so it's way too easy for your ego to just yeah. and the second that takes over your talent is just crushed i mean as at least for comedians um so i imagine it's maintenance you, you mean as soon as you start becoming y yeah you so leave your own your hype head. too i right. feel like as so many people believe their own hype and it's like yeah. a constant battle to not believe your own hype Do you for find some that? artists yeah but it also helps to believe your own hype so yeah so you have to be your own biggest fan this is kind of a different this is a different thing but when i started performing in 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 front of uh bigger audiences i had to deal with stage fright mm -hmm. and i don't have stage fright i don't have it at all mm -hmm. but at the beginning um i didn't really know like i, I had that kind of that anxiety about per performing on stage and I put together these two things. One thing that happened was I watched Frances McDormand get mm. an Academy Award and she stood up and she didn't know what to do with herself. <laughs> and she was just like, fuck, like and I could see this like genuine moment of like, I don't know what to do. I think what I'm going to do is pimp walk and she walked <laughs> up the stage like this. <laughs> right. And it was this conscious choice <laughs> of like, like, I'm just going to strut up there like I'm the shit. I'm yeah. Like, transmission received yeah so that's one side of it and the other side of it is it's just a tune just yeah come on give us a tune come on, go up and sing your song like mm -hmm. don't get too work up. sing to your friends mm -hmm. everybody out here their friends um enjoy a song with your friends and you're the baddest motherfucker who has ever walked on this on the stage ever and everything you do is a gift you're welcome and put those two things together mm. and walk out and you have uppers and downers <laughs> and that's that's how it kind of goes together mm -hmm. yeah the melding of those energies 
So what was attractive to fame for, about fame to begin with? Because I also like my whole life, basically the only, I never wanted to get married. I never wanted to have kids. All I wanted to do was become famous. And now look at you. Uh, yeah, look at this studio. <laughs> no, look at us in this half studio. <laughs> and that's why, that's why I was thinking about Andy Warhol. daycare going on. In <laughs> look at those lights that are falling <laughs> yeah. off the ceiling. Stop pulling up our, st our, our spots, Steve. Daisies. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. And so I was thinking about Andy Warhol today before you even came in, because what I liked about him was he was the first person i ever read about who was like unapologetically i want to be famous because so many people will tell you like that's empty or whatever and i was like i don't care i want it so what uh and but i i have similar feelings i mean obviously you're a lot more famous than us but i have similar feelings about it now it's kind of just like eh, it wasn't really it was checking a box i like it it was an achievement <laughs> for me i was just like okay i did what i set out to do now what it didn't give me really any satisfaction outside of achieving the thing so what was it about fame that was appealing to you going into it you can get it you can get uh i'm sorry we don't have reservations do you do you have room for two that was what was appealing in the beginning it's great walk the right yeah. the fuck in <laughs> i mean you i walk, hear you right that sounds nice in. have you ever said that and someone's like i don't care no i've never i've ne I, I don't think i've ever used my name okay really um, no okay i never gone like or you have other people use it though yeah yeah hell yeah yeah my roadies look up doing shout it. out yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no no you just kind of you know i'm just making a joke about restaurants <laughs> may i have some water yeah it's i'm having a great time are you yeah thanks i can't for tell me. yeah you are you, you can't tell i think you are but i don't know you yet so i don't know oh you seem relaxed yeah that's nice good. of you to come yeah i really Even appreciate it you thinking it was gonna be a but shit hole wait, can we talk about sex yeah what what do you what is your relationship been with sex like have you had like some people some people it's very are, popular and i enjoy it okay yeah 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 <laughs> some people have hang-ups with it some people have all kinds of relationships with it some mm. people's sex life just goes smoothly the whole time other people you know rocky roads and then they figure they uncover layers about themselves so they can be uh -huh. more genuine what has your your sexual journey been like i just i just just put this one caveat um i when I started out, uh, was in some public relationships. Right. Yeah. And I learned some things from those, which is, um, number one, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Um, cause well, I, you know, like this whole thing about, uh, uh, it, I, I didn't want to be in the tabloids and I've been in tabloids and I yeah. didn't want to do that. So I don't talk about, I don't, I don't. I mean, not I names. Yeah. 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 So that, philosophically. Yeah. That's what I'm more yeah, wondering. Like, like I just don't like. I don't share anything about relationships. And yeah. 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 It's just way. It's just way better. And I see. Um. I mean, I don't. I don't watch any of those fucking shows or anything like that. But like, <laughs> show? just, just like you know, like um, the, like tabloid shows, like Bachelorette. Like, no, like Kanye and 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 uh. uh uh, Kim, Kim, just being, oh like, oh yeah, just wankers. You don't watch trash television. I mean, they're no. they're over, it, you know. Oh yeah, great. <laughs> they broke up. I don't well, know if you know. I didn't know. I'm saying that, I don't yeah. know anything. <laughs> I just was wanted to tell you. Dommage. It's, it, no one gives a shit. <laughs> I, I was like, oh no, I have some bad news. But for I'm you. just saying, like, it's just like like there's a type of person who wants to just gauge in this constant mm, porn yeah. of having somebody else. Well, who is a viewer, like yeah. and monetizing and 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 all of that kind of stuff. A little so, awkward to say on this show, but I just don't no, share but it. I don't care about. I'm no, not no, talking no, about wait, specifics. Wait. I'm no, talking. It I'm was more, You're like, well, this segment's going to be boring. No, no, no. I'm joking because, like, literally, this whole show, this whole podcast, was us sharing our uh, sex lives and, and dating lives, but from the perspective that we're talking about, which is philosophical, yeah. not to be like, look at us. That's why we had guys on to have a conversation sure. with people's face, just to talk, just to uncover layers. Of, I know what this podcast points. is. I love just, this podcast. I just, so, so, but my, so my question for you, you is. You don't need to explain your podcast to me. It just seemed I, like I was like, uh-oh. I, I am your consumer. Okay. Right. Yeah. So Thank you. How has your relationship to sex in general evolved? Like, is it important to you? Was it more important to you when you're younger? Is it more important to you now? Is it, do you experience it? Like, is it intimate for you? Or is it something like, I don't know. Cause I, I would imagine sex can be such a beautiful thing. And it's, it, it's one of the most intimate moments you're going to have with another human being. But then I think of fame and how it kind of takes that away. Don't you think sleeping over is more intimate? Yeah. But to me, I have sex and then I sleep. I mean, I, that's how really? I do it. Yeah. I'm huh. a 
well if you don't give a shit about astrology but i'm a double pisces so i'm very like i'm very oh, that explains it <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does that mean <laughs> wow there's Just your inner cunt we all have it <laughs> She's a double. i'm gonna come face on. corinne now. come on come on come on come back come back i know you mean Double because Pisces. somewhat i've i've had just sleepovers mostly when i like turn guys down for sex and then yeah and then that's you, fun and there, there's and it, then they sleep over yeah get they hold the your hand yes your, they do they hold your no, hand no no they think no. i can't get it too detailed here but because it's like it was a Im important moment in my life uh but <laughs> i like yeah like i someone i really wanted to have sex with so badly oh, I, yeah but i knew for a variety of reasons that it could not it was not right and to do so and it would not it would not work out um i was hanging out with him in a hotel room and he was obviously like down and then i when i rejected him we we kind of he we just spent the night sleeping next to each other uh -huh. and he like held my arm pretty tightly uh -huh. huh. but, but like there to, it was like one 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 tightness uh, like below where i would feel uncomfortable like this is too much yeah uh -huh. you know like this is like anger like are we gonna get washed away on the titanic and it was can't wait to leave and it was I one of the best so out of, of that hotel. really why yeah, because well number one i showed number one let go of my arm well it was like i said it was just one one notch intimate. below where i felt uncomfortable because i'm pretty good about knowing when i feel comfortable and when i need to leave and i had no problem i didn't feel like i was being held hostage or anything in that hotel it's not like there was a barricade on the door it was small it was a more of a connective moment yeah it was connect and it was also like look at you you can say no to the person you want to have sex with most in the world at this time and you didn't tell you to leave. You stood your ground and you're still here and we're still friends to this day. And it was an intimate evening of yeah. laying in bed together. It was great. It was like, it was, it was in a way more satisfying than if I had, because I knew if I had sex, I wasn't going to hear from this person again. Really? Yeah. yeah. Why? Happens. Uh, I, it just, you, there's if like you a, have sex with guys, you would know that sometimes that happens. No, because, uh, because of our difference in like authority. I think I'll say it like that. Oh because our our relation who yeah. i was to him would change that's why i'm trying to be not he was incriminating <laughs> an entertainer yeah hmm interesting have you ever been rejected for sex uh-huh how did i've how also did you been feel? ghosted which wow. i really don't like did you like that i don't understand that at all while you were famous yeah. you were ghosted yeah mm. by really? another famous person or no mm. ouch <laughs> Ouch, ouch, ouch. No. No? No. Hmm. Um, I just don't get it. Yep. You know? uh, yeah. The thing is, you'll never know what's going on in their head. I know. It could be eight million things, and we always assume, like, the one that's going to hurt us. And I've, I, exactly, and I've I've kind of come to, like, believe that we're, we're doing the best we can. We're, we all are, even the fuck-ups. You know, yeah. Mostly. There's a very, it's usually not malice. I was like, you don't spend a lot of time on Twitter, apparently, but. Or Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> no there's a lot of a lot of malice there. there's yeah. a lot of malice out there <laughs> yeah, i mean yeah, i guess yeah. most people i meet because you know there's the initial filter sure so if you get past that hmm. yeah if you even even on twitter i will say if you talk back to someone uh instead of yelling back at them you can make you can make strides i don't talk back you just you uh, that's yeah you, hmm? you protect your sanity i just don't think yeah i don't think it's a place for dialogue twitter right? no yeah dialogues You're for podcasting <laughs> yes so anyway sex um yeah, sex. what's the i wrote this is my first question that i wrote down and you know you can answer it or not but i wrote what's the horniest thing a fan has done to you or for you oh great question <clears throat> this is a toughie because there's been so many huh because there's been so many yeah yeah it's, i i thought what are the hits it's a <laughs> um <sighs> hmm. i like to talk about this at a bar <laughs> <laughs> So you want to go out for drinks later? Yeah, let's okay. go out for drinks later, and right. I'll tell you some shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck you, but listeners. There's kind of a, 
Suck there's my kind of dick, a, fucker. There's wow. kind of a, that was a slap in the face of the guy. Well, there's a there's a really it. like there's a don't uh you just there's yeah. a you also, don't talk about the You encourage I, I understand like your words could encourage more of a certain behavior that you might not want we to happen. Want that. So I don't want yeah. I don't want that. I just, uh, I'm that's so like fascinated. telling our listeners that we love when people buy us wine. We're like, don't say that because then we're just going to no. get bombarded. Well, listeners, they actually do love wine. They like shitty like wine in no. boxes. <laughs> um, that would be cute for the set. I I'm think. a whiskey gal. little, yeah, Franzia. <clears throat> um, but see, the thing is that most, like, most people who are like, uh, see me as the the performer or they 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 see the the scene the image or you know the the album cover like they're seeing that you know what's something so things that change very very quickly when you know they know the real you yeah okay are they disappointed uh, not necess- or they're just they're just not different. necessarily but um um the relationships that i've had with people are primarily uh, almost exclusively uh, with people who um, don't know me as third eye blind yeah. initially, right? Yeah. What's something that people would be surprised to know about you as the person? <sighs> I'm taller than expected. <laughs> Maybe, really? I don't know. I thought you were as tall as you are. Oh, okay. Yeah. <sighs> you, you're very careful with your words, mm. which is, I really respect that as somebody who is into word economy, but in a conversational, you don't get that a lot in conversational form. So I appreciate that. What? Do you really appreciate it? Yeah, I do. Okay. Because I, yeah, I want to I... be more careful about how I speak. I just, I've it's something I've been wanting to build up to. And uh, it's just difficult. I have a lot of anxiety. <laughs> But I also appreciate people who just like open a vein and let it bleed and kind of like <laughs> I do, do, do your best, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And for me, though, I find myself trying to be particular about it. And I think I obsess over words. Um, so sometimes it, conversations tend to slow down. Yeah. It's good. That, that'll prevent you from anyway saying, back to sex <laughs> no is that from you think is that from like what came first you being particular about words or you being a lyricist probably both but also uh i've been misunderstood and i think that that i think i've realized like the impact that my words have mm-hmm. so um so i want to fucking mean it mm. yeah absolutely yeah. i mean that's not not yeah. take it back yeah, yeah. so many you... times like going on rants on this show like i get to, I, I i go I, I i people i get in trouble a lot basically and then i'll go back and listen to it and i think like the proudest moments are when i go back and listen to a rant to make sure i didn't say anything that's gonna fuck over my whole career and then i go no you said exactly what you wanted to say yeah and that and and you said it how you wanted to say it and so now however people take it in is on them. And that's something I learned, Sarah Silverman was talking about that in an interview Mm -hmm. because so often as a comedian, your jokes are misinterpreted and you just have to do the best job you can with it. And then when you let it out into the world, you feel good about it. And I would imagine the same is similar for songs. It is for songs, but you know, we have a podcast and we, uh, it's after shows, it's kind of backstage chit chat and we, Mm have a few drinks and and um we say just terrible (laughs) terrible things that i'm deeply ashamed of and i would totally take back but it doesn't matter because nobody listens to our podcast (laughs) so it's it's called and where can we get it uh it's called the pot of wine and uh podcast of yeah i got of wine the song and um (laughs) we make them very intermittently and uh there's no subject and we just kind of get on there and babble yeah. And then go later on, we go, fuck, I can't I believe I said that. that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it seems that's how I do it. I'm you sure your publicist it. loves this. I'm sure your loud. publicist yeah. loves it's this. It's a loud podcast. Yeah. <laughs> What's the worst thing to do when you're already famous in talk one, on a mic, put it on yeah. the internet? In one thing, yeah. do a podcast and fuck it all up. After a couple drinks. Get drunk. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's when yeah. the good stuff Get comes convivial out. and then talk some yeah, shit. Yeah, convivial. And also don't release it consistently, which is the number one most important thing in podcasting. Yeah, yeah that's definitely not going to happen. <laughs> hey, you do what you want. You do what you want to do. You do what I do it. We just put it when we put it out. And, oh, God. Yeah. What's it, kind of uh, piggybacking off the last question? What's a, what's an incorrect assumption that uh, fans of your work often make about you that is not true? An incorrect assumption. Yeah, that like mm. one that is there one like aggravates you, pisses you off, kept you up at night. It has it has in the past. I think that uh, that I we've been no fucks m- mostly mostly misunderstood. Um, and I think that there are, um, there are these, I think I was really upset about these kind of self appointed arbiters and mm-hmm. I am of indie rock and, but then being, um, sort of being subjected to gatekeeping by, by the indie rock, uh, mindset, which is a fucking shitty mindset because it's always this kind of let's engage in self-hatred and let's mm. let's attack our own kind of mm. thing which is mm. now is it's it's evaporated so so this is real gift from gen z which is we don't even know about any of these genres we have no idea so you get um what's his name harry styles yeah. pulls uh feel like a woman what's her name Shania. He taps on his purse yeah, and tries to remember Shania. Yeah, he did Coachella Shania Yeah, yeah, This is a novel moment. <laughs> he taps on his purse and tries to remember Shania Twain's name. Um, and they get out there on stage, and people, people, kids are not going, ha, 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 how ironic. I love this ironically. No, they just love it. Yeah. Right? So all of these, all of these lines and delineations break down. Yeah. And, um, and, um, and sort of the 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 indie rock critic uh uh gatekeeper um has no just has no more oxygen yeah and i think that's great coincides with me um doing things based on happiness quotient and not for not trying to get that um to to get that and suddenly when i when i to, to try to get that kind of um, understanding or approval. And suddenly when I do not give a fuck about it, in fact, I don't want it, mm-hmm. now we're critics darlings. Mm-hmm. It's strange how quickly, energetically that switches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Corinne's always said that ever since we started working together, knows the sexiest word in the industry. Because I used you to don't. be in management yeah, before like, I did this. Especially to the guy grabbing your arm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, you got to go, no. Yeah, I can still text like, him now. I don't think we're going to have sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good night. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Sleep well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just grip each other until yeah, the morning. Yeah, just grip you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who challenges you in your life? I want to apologize to both of you for not being able to answer any of these questions. <laughs> okay. And when I leave here, you're going to flip that fucking camera back on and go, not one. He didn't answer a single question. Yeah, if you don't want to answer, you don't um, answer. No, it's the, I want to answer. I really want to answer all these questions. And uh, who challenges me? You just mm. can't think of anyone? No. It, well, really? No, and I'm definitely challenged by people and and uh, I'm going to walk out of here and, and roll down the street and kind of float down the street and go, yeah. This person, this person, this person. Nancy Klingwald challenges me Nancy. and I forgot. Um, <laughs> oh. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, because you, you okay. So you said that I we were watching a lot of interviews and stuff, and I know some of you know you you've matured as a person or changed, or maybe you have. Who knows? Um, and it says you, you love brilliant women, and I wanted you to expand. on I have that. an answer to the last one. Okay, go ahead. I've got I've got these friends, these um, these <laughs> this guy I know, these these <laughs> these guy, these surfer friends, and um, <laughs> and uh, I I have these I have these different friend groups. And there, some of us, and we're, we're, we're tight as family and we travel, we meet each other in different places in the world and everybody wants to fucking talk Nice. and there's no questions and it drives me crazy, but we love each other. (laughs) And a lot of times I feel myself just folding from, from these things, but I fucking love these people, you know, but, but I've, I've said, it's just like, like, you know, if you're talking, you're just saying something you already know. Like, mm-hmm. there's, 
So you're not learning. You like new. inquiry and exploration and discovery in a conversation. I like, yeah, I like being, I like having impact with each other and being actually engaged. And, um, and there's a difference. The, the, this, this, my group, they're just excited. Yeah. Yeah. All right. To go for it. So there's a, so there's that, there's that energy and, uh, everybody's kind of brilliant and, and, and that challenges you. No, <laughs> they don't challenge me. Okay. Um, um, the question and then there's this, does. there's this other group, there's this other group by contrast, comma, if you will, um, that, um, these guys are, uh, one's a, he's like, I don't know. They're both in there. Like, we go surfing and driving up surfing. And I find as we're, we're driving, talking about things that the question gets expanded. Mm -hmm. Um, the challenge happens, it gets listened to received and, uh, I'm the better for it. And I want, I want more of that in my life, but I'm yeah. already taken because these these other friends who don't listen to a fucking word anybody says are for life. I'm stuck <laughs> they just with them. Be like I love the waves, and I like to tell you about my wave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, okay, I guess I'm a listener. Well, it's also maybe what you because you're are you only talking when you're surfing because it's like an adrenaline rush. So maybe if you pump the adrenaline down a little bit, there could be some more. No, rapid. driving to surfing. Oh, it's when you're okay. Well, We're maybe driving. you're just so amped up about even going yeah, to you're surfing. Yeah, like, mm, just driving, it's kind of driving surfing. And like, <laughs> then when, once we get on the water, everybody kind of fades away. And their own thing. Does their thing, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. So I was going to say. Well, no, I was. All right. Uh, well, we tried. This, <laughs> no, this is going, this is going off. This is, I'm trying to marry questions together. So then, so that's what challenges you. And then you've said that you love brilliant women, but I'll, I feel like, I'll, and this is not supposed to be like a fight, like, a lot of men say that and then what they kind of mean in my experience is that they like a woman who <clears throat> you know has a, a small handmade jewelry business and they don't want it to escalate <laughs> beyond that and it sounds like i'm joking but i'm really this is like a i dumb, like her to know her place i'm dead serious about that so like yeah can you expand on what you mean by brilliant woman and like an actual real life experiences <laughs> I need a bibliography for this. <laughs> like what? So like I tried to flip Rachel Maddow. <laughs> wow. That's, and that's I a wrote lot of layers song, to that. And I wrote the song um, one in 10 mm -hmm. about her um, and how it didn't work out. But I she, fucking tried. Are you gay. fucking with us? Is no. this for real? She's gay. I love Rachel Maddow. I see it. So was that a so? He goes, that's never stopped me before. Yeah. <laughs> You heard it here first. I said flipped. Um, yeah. Humans are humans. Um, yeah. Massive crush. Yeah. I Bril get it. Brilliant women. Yeah. Yeah. The so headlines are Stephen she, Jenkins doesn't think gay is a real thing. When, when, Happy uh, pride. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. How dare you? Just because someone's gay doesn't mean you're not going to have a crush on them, though. How dare That's, you? you know. Listen to King Princess, you fucker. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. So you like very smart women like pussy is god yeah it's not for you steven right you cannot listen okay right and um anyway so i was just trying to give you an example <laughs> yeah yeah okay all right awesome. you know, i like that so many boxes so many boxes um but not you want an example of brilliant women and me being like, what like and I like brilliant and women. What, so and what was the kind of the given when she talks in about infrastructure and she goes off on one of her lectures? I'm all like, oh, wow. Rachel. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah we got to rebuild those bridges, right? Yeah. I yeah. Just love it. Yeah. I like bridges too. Reallocate that budget, yeah. girl. Mm -hmm. Okay. Power grid. And that doesn't <laughs> intimidate you to be like it's if you were you so you would seriously like be in a relationship with Rachel Maddow that wouldn't intimidate you? In a heartbeat. Yeah. 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 Okay. I I mean, my mother was was a had power, and my mother lived in a post feminist mindset, uh, meaning that she, I don't know why or how, took her own equality for granted in the same way mm. that men do. So men never, never go, I'm equal to women. They never do that. And women in, in a um, feminist mindset have to do it all the fucking time. And it's uh -huh. exhausting, mm -hmm. right? I don't know why, but my mother just didn't. 
and I would uh, when I was a kid, I would walk down the 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 halls uh, at at Stanford uh, with her, and men would and she was clicking uh, in the in, down the halls in her heels because she was busy and doing something, and men would chase after her and ask her questions and uh, she wouldn't slow down nice and this is my mother yeah and so I was so I grew up with women being um, in positions of power being listened to um, and um, you were shown that example and then I went to Cal so you know so here we are so so not really a big deal Mm -hmm. not it it, it's not a that makes it's not a surprise yeah yeah I find that the men who kind of do it have grown up in in families or houses with a lot of strong women. Yeah, but it may, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit that you have to be sh- sh- like shown a, a a strong woman early in life to appreciate it later on in life. But you know what's fucking hot to me? Like, what? like if you really if, like if if the sex is going to be really good, mm-hmm. is that there's some place where there's a willingness to go where I'm going to be, I'm going to be witness to, um, um, something that's like deeper and daring. Mm -hmm. And there's a total mental part of that. It's definitely expanded by, um, somebody who can see things in ways that I don't. Hmm. Are you talking about vulnerability, like a deep vulnerability? No, I'm talking about smart. Okay. Yeah. During sex? Um, as a part of like, as a part of what speak, make, creates attraction. Right. Part yeah. of the vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So leave the glasses on. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. 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 Don't take yeah. them out. Keep, keep, keep really glasses on. <laughs> so I know you don't want to talk about like your personal stuff, but. <laughs> Do you have a favorite breakup album? Not like not one that you've written. Like so, you know, Taylor Swift, Clank, yeah, like, like when you're sad. No, I have breakup albums, and I listen to them so much later. Um, Long I mean, after the breakup, you mean? I've never talked about my relationship with Charlize, um, but the album everybody knows out of the vein was one that I wrote. Yeah, about it, and when I wrote it, um, I. A lot of times, talking about self-recrimination, I, mm. I, I, um, I don't know that it hit the mark, and I don't listen to my albums. The, the, I don't put them on and wind through them. No, when totally. I do, it, 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 it just makes me. I, I think the hi hat's too bright, or something like I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I pick it apart. You think um, it missed the mark in, in meaning that it didn't truly capture how you felt about the breakup? Is yeah, that, I do. Uh, I think it missed the mark, and then. Um, we decided to do an uh, finally to do an unplugged album, and so I went back and and we listened to songs, and uh, from that period, and I was kind of flooded with these uh, these like it it it, it, it reignited uh, emotions in me. Or mm-hmm. it, it, not even reignited; it just ignited emotions in me, sure. and I and I kind of went into landscapes, um, and I went, yeah, I think I was just being hard on myself because mm-hmm. that is that is that is a picture uh, of where I'm at, and that's a breakup album. Yeah. What what uh, other? And I was so bummed with it. I didn't I didn't make another album um, after that one for six years. Oh wow. Wow, Talk that's... about self recrimination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You imprison yourself in a way, your creativity in a way. Well, I made other albums for other people and things, oh, but like okay. I, I, def- I definitely got so off. You just wanted to re- refocus. Yeah, so. Do you have other artist albums yeah. that you use as breakup albums? Like what, what, what's a breakup song that you love by somebody else? Or that... like an album that you put on that you just like, oh, I'm gonna like, cry what this shit. Now. Yeah, I'm gonna cry on my surf or it's always my driver, car. isn't it? <laughs> mm, yeah, I, I mean, always, you said it like it's for everyone. For me, it's Alanis for... Morissette always. Really? Are you? How is that stunning to you? As a breakup album? Yeah, yeah that bitch was pissed because she's going. Oh, because she's pissed. Yeah, she's oh. she goes through all the emotions. Can I have another water? Yes. <laughs> 
I mean, and I mean, no, I, you're pissed. This and is I, a two water podcast. I do think, I nice. do think Taylor Swift. Your producer has nice shoes. I, he, he's it's a, all about the he's shoes. He's a good darling. looking guy. He's yeah. a good looking guy. You know what? Big dick, big <laughs> hog too. Apparently, bravo. Big old hog. I had a kind of a running joke on the show. How'd it feel yeah. about you, young man? <laughs> that smile. <laughs> That's not because of his personality. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of anxiety, but huge dick. <laughs> quiet. You can't have both, you know? He's got off the rails. Yeah. <laughs> quiet, but packing. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. You're so a Bonnie Bear can put you in your feelings pretty yeah, easily. Yeah, but... but uh... But I don't, I don't, uh, I think what's really interesting here is when you say breakup album, it's for me to kind of feel sad and work through it. And for you, it's to go, oh, oh, you're, what is that thing? You're only you, thinking of, you. that's you're the thinking, one. That you're thinking of Jagged Little Pill. Like, that's just like. Yes, I'm thinking of Jagged Little Pill. <laughs> she has other albums. No, you, she doesn't. Yeah, she does, Steven. <laughs> And you got to get on the internet more. I know you don't really want to be do. on it, but I hear but great things about the internet. <laughs> there's different phases of of uh, there's different phases of the breakup. There's the angry. There's the Taylor Swift. We're never ever getting back together. Yeah. There's the crying part. Yeah. There's the you know. There's the. I mean, everything can. I think everything also can be talked about through breakups that, on Taylor Swift's 1989 album. But that's <laughs> that's not the hill I'm going to die on right now. Also, a big Justin Bieber fan. If you want to get Woo! into it, you know that really? guy Halsey. Also great breakup songs i'm really into i feel like people kind of turn their nose up at pop music and i love pop music and i think there's so much value in it i don't that's fine yeah i don't i don't turn my nose up at it oh I'm you don't like, turn your, oh, I, 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 know, I, I don't like, like pop uh i actually hate it yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no 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 well no, because i think you know you're, you're i had this musician, i had this yeah. moment where uh, i was listening to uh uh, uh dua lupa mm -hmm. and it was mm -hmm. kind of early and it was uh um <sighs> What's that song? Uh, uh, I'm levitating. Yeah. That one? Okay. Levitating, so it was yeah. like kind of early uh, on that one. And I was like, wow, this is the most corporate, like <laughs> put together. I was saying this to my keyboard player, um, like just, just song by committee. And uh, he goes, it's fantastic. <laughs> and, and I just stopped kind of in my tracks because here I am judging it because it's so slick. And uh, I go, it is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it was easy. It's fucking fantastic. Yeah, I just switched. I was just like, yeah, yeah. I was like, why am I, co why am I commenting on this? It's great. And who cares if it's slick? Like, and it's, it's yeah. all, you know, we got, we all got together and made it like a movie. You know, yeah. it's basically, it's just, it's, it's like making Star Wars to put that song together. And uh, she's great. And like, what's wrong with that? Uh, you know, a little joy. Yeah. So right? it's like, don't you like Pringles? Like people are like, I never eat that. I don't know. Let's just eat a Pringle sometimes. Like live a little. I don't know. Yeah. Get it's, that Cheeto in there. You, there there's, I'm all for it. You can. Yeah. Okay. I'm all for it. I like Damien Rice's good breakup music. I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to introduce you to Alanis Morissette's other. Out there's been so she's many. I've seen lies. her in concert like 15 times. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yes. Huh. Her and Cindy Lauper are probably the people I've seen. Well, I most. like her very much. I like Alanis Morissette. Us too. Yeah. So clearly. Uh, also us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who are your other favorite artists? I can just never remember. I, I like this guy Hobo Dave right now. <laughs> uh, I think he's great. He's just like punk rock surf guy. Nice. Um, I need to write these down. Um, yeah, I just did a whole Hobo Dave. Uh, I mean, it's a great name. Yeah, I like. Uh, there's another. I, it's all these Daves. Uh, there's a Dave. Uh, he's like a um, the British guy. Yeah. Yeah, I heard Whoa, you talking what? about him, and I just pulled up his twenty two with the two point two. I was so happy from a long hiatus. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm all about that. That that drill beat. Yeah. Thing. So those are kind of like rolling through me right now. Um, God, I have all. Oh. I don't have the whole fucking playlist. They just when I'm wherever I'm put oh, on the spot, I just don't I, worry about I, it. Okay, I, just go to I have a, a question. Blur. <laughs> because we're we're wrapping. Bring up. a microphone tonight. Yeah. What makes? <laughs> <laughs> just bring just bring a microphone tonight. We're actually gonna redo this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, show up with some Knob Creek. Uh, in, in your present day, like what? You're makes... gonna go. You're gonna. You guys are gonna come to a bar tonight. 
and you're going to meet us and you're going to be like, these are the filthiest fucks I've ever met. Well, How did this good. not show up on our podcast? Sometimes you yeah. put pressure on something and it doesn't make a diamond. Well, we're yeah. going to start highlighting your podcast. We are bad people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll get some, <laughs> get some clips from that podcast. Yeah, well, you, yeah. You're definitely, you're definitely um, invited to come be on our podcast. We're doing uh, we would love Jones that. Beach. Nice. Uh, in... I don't know when. Sometime this summer. Oh, let us know. Tour this summer. You're invited. Backstage, we will definitely be doing oh, yeah. podcast. backstage at, at Jones. Have you ever been to Jones Beach? Yeah, I have. It's one yeah, of my yeah. favorite places to play in the mm -hmm. world. Yeah. Uh, it's in Salt Long Island. Set set there. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Had a girl. Who's that? <laughs> uh, um, anyway, so they have a great backstage. And uh, we'll, we'll do your pot. We'll do the. Come podcast there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll get more out of you. <laughs> yeah. Where do you want your life to go? Mm. I'd like to be president. You I could, visualize you being could. president of the United States. I'd be such a fucking good president. Yeah. Um, what would be your platform? I'm just being honest. I, I like that I, you have I the confidence really to say that. Yeah, I would. I what would. would your platforms be? Your main issues that yeah. you care about? So energy has to be entirely free. Mm -hmm. And it can only be, it has to be completely free, like Star Trek free. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't. So, so all of your energy, everything that you use, is entirely free. So, uh, Con Ed, done. Done. No more bills. Cut. No more bills. You, you don't have any. Turn energy the lights bills. on, and it's yours. You drive endlessly, and uh, you just leave the lights on. And we, uh, the entirety of Bangladesh is air conditioned. Um, okay. We, and it has to. It, it can only just be free. Do you know that you're not going to be with your president? You don't have power over Bangladesh. Well, huh? your international policy can include cooling. <laughs> oh, I was like, are you president of, not the, this president. of the world? Anyway, I'd like to be president. <laughs> yeah. uh, and um, I'm making like another album and I'd over. like to um, make this album um, now and put it out. And uh, so I see my life in the, in the very near term about actually being on this tour and um it being lovely and being like a, a celebration and being um the people in my band we really love each other and uh there's been so many years where i've had these toxic relationships and i've gone through a lot of work to get the people around me where where we really have empathy for each other mm -hmm. and excitement around each other we're kind of like a bunch of puppies yeah support system and we're like we're in this we're in that thing and we we really like playing music together and to 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 bring that and i know that's like that's not where i see my life going but that's like what's in front of me and mm -hmm. i'm fucking about it yeah God. it gives you a lot it gives you a lot of joy i mean yeah. what the fuck's the point of life if you're not going to like love and be loved D doesn't but I'm mean not romantic because I'm an observer and I sit outside and no one loves me. Well, that's not kidding. true. I just, I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, you know, that's not <laughs> I just true. Didn't land that one. <laughs> yeah, you. Got it's harder than it's, it's harder. It's hard. Than it seems. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't just say I'd be terrified being a comedian. I have no problem getting up and, and singing songs with people on acoustic guitar, but like, yeah, to do what you do, you don't have crutches. It's just you. You seem yeah. like you like starting trouble, which, in my opinion, is, is the first comedians? step into being a comedian. I definitely being like. Punk. I came up punk rock, and I I feel like I still am punk, and and like, go ahead and say it, and if it if if it. See how go it lands. With, go, go with where it goes. Yeah, if it yeah. always lands, yeah. you're not taking any risks. Yeah. There has to be like uncomfortable like moments. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but exactly. That means that you're willing to try. Yeah. And just yeah. be like, yeah, it didn't work. And you got to sit in it and be okay with it. Yeah. And love yourself through it. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. This has been uh, fun. We are, what are we, so, people, you want to let people listen to your podcast or your tour? <laughs> we could tell them no. If but. you can find it, to the <laughs> 1,500 of you out there who listen to our podcast, um, um, see you sometime see you this summer yeah, yeah you're pot of wine. on tour pot of yeah. wine see you this summer um, yeah but but uh but yeah come see us this summer on the summer gods tour um oh so you're asking like uh music you're listening to i love hockey dad um okay i fucking love hockey dad and they are opening for us this summer and they're oh, cool. they are these like two like like surfer fucks from <laughs> uh australia and every song that they have they have a song called listen to the song i need a woman it's just fun it's so good it's just like it's like punk that reminds me of local h a little bit um 
I yeah, I love them. So I'll be like I'll be listening to them at the beginning. Nice. Cool. Of the show. Thanks for having me. Was it yeah, did you enjoy your time here with us? On <laughs> I did. Talk? I just feel like, you know, I just realized that I'm really shitty at <laughs> when you ask the questions like, what's your favorite color? What's your like what's your what's what's a, um, you know, what's a um who are your horniest groupies? Like yeah. any specific question, I just suddenly Blank. I tend to yeah, I don't know why. Well, I put on the uh, spot. I don't know. Maybe our energy is just so vibrant that it fogs your brain to sort of think about answers no, it's more because accessibly. I, I come to fucking New York and what do we do here? This is a very unhealthy city. I mean, <laughs> I was like not gonna drink last night. Oh so yeah, you can't backstage yeah. we do this we do this private show. It was a birthday party. Oh whoa. It was great. Wait, That's, you do private wait, you right. private shows? No, we don't do private shows. Wait. We don't do any private shows. Oh, he doesn't uh, like tell us later. Do, there's Bands a price don't for do everything. private shows. I know I know a girl who had a sweet sixteen that like Beyonce showed up to. What? So Yeah, it was on a TV show. I said I know it like I knew her, but it was like my sweet sixteen. So we played Beyonce's <laughs> friends um sweet sixteen party <laughs> last night um at this place called the McKittridge and it was oh, really yeah. kind of a shit. Sleep and no afterwards more. I was w wasn't gonna drink, but the um the, the in person whose birthday. So we had a few glasses of champagne and then we just went out to the pub with yeah. the band afterwards and then it's we fun. just had three or four yeah. tequilas. Yeah. And so yeah. I woke up with a head of mud again. Night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> again. All right. Like well, tonight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you How have the fuck do we wind this thing up? <laughs> At some point they're just going to decide. We'll, we're just going to stop. We'll stop it. But yeah. you, okay. So I'm going to stop it now. So you, you got, you, don't think of any more answers to questions. Okay. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Okay. So this has been Guys We Fucked, the anti slut shaming <laughs> podcast. We'll talk to you next Friday. Bye. Yay! Always can we just record, Mike? I always do, but you know, I like to. We missed the whole Basquiat thing. Now we have to like thank you. We try to be. What is well, I was at the Basquiat thing. Thank you for asking. What is that, Christina? I don't know what that. I don't know fancy stuff.